Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's time of reflection here on Facebook. Wherever you may be watching this, warm greetings to you from both the Bester and the Ankatil families. I know that last week I behaved a little bit like our national government when I shifted the goalposts unexpectedly and reneged on a commitment to have finished the series that we were on last week. But I do hope that there was at least a little bit more rationale and a good reasoning behind my decision to do that. Nevertheless, as promised, tonight we bring to a close the series that we've been on for, for a number of weeks, focusing on the question of how it is that we can grow our faith in this time of isolation. And tonight I want us to focus and reflect very deliberately on the need in the growing of our faith to own the pain that surrounds us. See, our relationship with Jesus must always be rooted in an honest recognition of the reality within which we find ourselves and confronting the same. And so it is absolutely crucial for us to recognize and to own the hardship and the struggle that is faced by so many during this time of global pandemic. As we prepare to spend some time in reflection, in reading and hearing God's word, would you join me as we spend a moment in prayer? Gracious Lord Jesus, week in and week out, we have given you thanks for the privilege of being able to engage in these new ways and to experience a sense of connection with one another. We ask that tonight, as we do the same, you would make known to us the wonder of your presence with us, each of us in our homes. Would you open our hearts to a deeper hearing and fuller believing of your word? Would you open our minds to a deeper understanding of the truth of the gospel. In your name, Lord Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen. I'd like to read to you tonight a passage from Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Jesus went through all the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. It's a passage from Matthew's gospel that is often used in an evangelistic setting, in the need for more and more people to engage in the work of God's kingdom throughout the world. But there's one particular portion of that text that I think holds for us a very important key to the growing of our faith in a time like this, or in any time really. And it's found in the description of Jesus looking across over the crowds that had gathered to come to him, noticing that they were harassed and helpless like people without a shepherd, and then having compassion on them. I remember as a, as a teenager, uh, a youth pastor sharing with us on the idea of compassion and, and what it means, and breaking the word compassion into, into two, two different words, saying that compassion is constructed from the words common and passion. In other words, to suffer with others. It is vital in a time like this, as we continue in our faith journey, 
and a desire for our faith to grow stronger and for our relationship with Jesus to grow stronger. To recognize the need for greater compassion. To own the pain, not only that we're enduring, but to own the pain that others are enduring. To recognize the reality, not only of our own hardship and our own struggle, but of others as well. Not on a, not on a mental level, not, not recognizing it by virtue of the fact that we see it on the news or read it in the newspapers or hear about it on the radio or as we flick through Facebook. But to really own it. To have compassion, to suffer with, to allow the suffering of others into our own hearts in order that it may, may evoke within us a response that is real, a response that is like the one Jesus had on the crowds, to have compassion. If we allow this, this compassion of Jesus to fill our hearts in a time like this, it will change our behavior. It will change the way we interact with others. It will change the way we respond to certain situations. And therein, the growing of our faith finds a fuller expression, a more richer meaning. So friends, tonight as we bring to a close this series of reflections on, on how it is that we grow our faith in this time of isolation during this season of lockdown, it is of ultimate importance for us to allow our growing faith to evoke within us a very real compassion for others, that we might suffer with them, that, they might, that, that their pain might become ours, that our hearts would break for what breaks their hearts, not blinded only by our own suffering and hardship, but with eyes open to the struggle of others. Allowing that to drive our response to the people we see as we go to the shops or as we drive to work. To the people who walk along the streets where we live. To the people whom we hear about and read about in the news. And to the people in our own congregation. And so, as this faith journey continues in strange and uncertain times, my Encouragement for all of us is to pray daily that our compassion would be deepened. That our compassion would be like that of Jesus. For in owning the pain of others, we will truly enter into relationship with them in a way that reflects the love of Jesus. And to that end, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with each one of us, now and forevermore. Amen.